So while that Rust-Oleum dries up on the roof, why the Rust-Oleum? Watch last week's episode by clicking the link in the top right corner to find out. I figured we'd start working on some electrical. Currently we have a Goal Zero Yeti 400. We will connect that to a fuse box. This is a Blue Sea Systems blade fuse box. This will go out to our fans, our lights, anything that's 12 volt, uh, this will be going to it in the van. To power those things, we're gonna use 14 gauge wire. Um, I planned to go with 12 gauge originally, but uh, looking over a gauge diagram, it kind of, was alluding that 16 gauge would be just fine for the application we need for lights and fans and stuff. Uh, and I thought 14 will just be a little bit safer, a little bit more peace of mind. It's marine grade, it's uh, multiple strands uh, within, um, just a positive and negative. So that'll do for that. To go to the lights, uh, we have some two to one uh, wire step town connectors. These are some um, ring terminal connectors that connect to the fuse box. And then I have some other various uh, connectors that we'll be putting, uh, you know, for the wiring for the lights, uh, switches, and all that stuff. To protect uh, our wiring, I ended up buying some uh, of this one inch loom. Uh, so we'll be able to fit a decent amount of strands within uh, this, this loom. And uh, one thing you want to make sure to protect around corners, uh, anywhere metal would rub, vibration from driving, all that stuff. Uh, can do you know wreak havoc on cords so this is protected with a sleeve an outer sleeve from the two wires but you can never be too safe so uh this is just a backup uh, for that so uh let's get to it so this area is going to be our electrical spot um, and we're going to utilize this center column and then probably this top piece here uh, for running our wires uh, the first ones I'm going to work on is our fans. I cut wires for both our front and back fan, and I decided to uh, see about testing this. This was the wires coming out of the fan, positive and negative, positive and red, black. I just had those spade connectors, male and female. <laughs> Look at this guy. Look at this guy. All that wire down here. 5 amp fuse in our fuse box, uh, positive going into the positive, and this is the negative side, and then uh, those wires come in to our goal zero, where the 12 volt is set up, so that should have power to it, and we're going to go test it out on the fan. Whoa! We have electricity! So this is pulling air in. So far it's at 21 watts, which we can have 120 out. So I figured I'd give you a little rundown on our electrical system. So we have a Goal Zero Yeti 400. It's a uh, AGM battery. Um, we plan to upgrade to a lithium 3000 in the future. Uh, we kind of wanted the plug and play option so we didn't have to worry about both the space that batteries and uh, ch charge controller and everything takes up. This is one system all, uh, you know, within this one little box. Uh, so we measured out the area. This will be our power uh, center right, right here. For all of our 12 volt stuff, we will use a Blue Sea Systems uh, fuse box. Uh, as you can see, this is for one of the fans uh, going up in the back. Um, that comes out to a goal zero. Uh, this is a max current cable. This is something the Yeti Lithium 3000 will be able to utilize. Um, you can actually take 10 amps out of each connection point. Uh, for now, we're just going to use one single one. And so that just plugs into the system. Uh, the AGM 400 only has a max of 120 watts or 10 amps out of all the output plugs. So uh, that single output is the only thing we can basically utilize out of it. So uh, that's all we really need. 
can turn it on. I don't know if you heard the fan kind of bump. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that fan on for you. And so the nice thing about this system is it tells you your output. So currently, uh, our output is only seven watts on the fan. It's on one of the low settings. The max output for the fan is usually only about 33 watts. So uh, we could run both fans, have a total of you know 66 to 70 watts, and then also uh, have our lights on and not have to worry too much. Uh, once we get that 3000, uh, we'll be able to utilize a lot more. You know, be, this I couldn't plug in a Blendtec blender, um, so this might not be for you if that's what you're hoping for. But the bigger 3000, even the 1000 on up, they could all, uh, you know, they have a, a bigger converter that could run a blender off of them. So uh, for us, this this will do the trick. So um, I'm not exactly sure what setting this is, but switch it around and see how that goes oh so this is oh that's in <laughs> the other one was out wow that feels good i'm gonna go ahead and figure out um finishing up wiring the back fan testing that out and then um we'll see about running wires up to uh start the light switches So uh, the rest of the night didn't go as planned. I started working on the garage lights and I mistakenly put positive to negative, positive to negative, rather than positive to positive, negative to negative, and back uh, to the ground. So I'm gonna have to redo that completely. So uh, learn from my mistake. Make sure you wire correctly. Do wire diagrams if you have to, uh, that might help. So last night, I uh, was working on these garage lights. They're gonna go on the bed frame, um, under the bed frame, to light the garage on both sides. It was the one that I screwed up with and I scratched my head for quite a while about it. Uh, but today, I walked through the circuit again, added a positive, positive connection between the two, and everything is good to go. So this wire will go across the bed frame, back to the side of the bed frame, and there will be a switch uh, mounted on the right side for the door that opens first. Then it runs back to the first string of lights, across to the next string of lights, and then back to our circuit board. Uh, so here's that switch, and we have light. One of the things I've been working on today is wiring for our lights. We're gonna have four puck lights over the bed and four puck lights over the uh, living area. Um, so they're this matte finished uh, spring clipped light that will go into our shiplap ceiling. And um, one of the things that we've been wanting to do is have light switches at the doorway uh, so that when you get into the van, you can just flip them on from the door. And then when we go to bed or when one of us gets up in the morning and the other one still wants to sleep, uh, we'll have a light switch at the bed uh, so that you can turn the lights on uh, in like the living space. One of the things I've been doing is wiring up two two-way switches and also with dimmers. Um, so I've only wired to the one side so far. Uh, so this will be the switch at the doorway and that turns on the light. And then I also uh, wired that, that up to the three-way switch um, for the one at the bed. And that has a dimmer. Uh, I don't know if you can see that dimming down. Uh, but then, uh, so when we're getting out of bed, you can turn the lights on in the living area. Uh, leaving for the day, you can turn them off at the door. But yeah, so that's kind of the, the mess of wire I have here. So we're gonna have to have wire run over to the doorway, and then that one runs over to the bed, and then we're gonna have four you know, wires that have to run around to the LED lights that are up on the ceiling. And then that runs back to our, our uh, fuse box, uh, completing the circuit. One of the things I'll suggest to you uh, when you're doing wiring, especially if you're gonna use uh, these three-way sw switches, um, or a dimmer option, they have four different connections uh, that you have to figure out where they go for you know matching up with the other switch um, or to utilize this by itself you just skip the three-way and just use those three wires um, so one of the things that I like to do is kind of draw out a wiring diagram so I know exactly where things are going uh, and then I kind of give myself some steps to say these are the things I need to tackle first uh, and that way you'll be able to uh, kind of get in get out and on with life 
Whereas, you know, if you didn't have it written down, you screw something up. Uh, obviously, that happened to me last night. Not thinking about the uh, positive to negative, positive to negative. Definitely do some diagrams, uh, or at least just step by step write out your process just so you know what you're doing. All right, so that's where we're gonna call it today. These guys are super hungry, and this is all the wire I have left. We weren't able to finish completely the four lights, wiring the four lights above the bed, and then we weren't even able to start running a wire um, to the second switch of the uh, living area. So uh, tomorrow, Amazon's delivering another spool of this stuff, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to finish it then. Thanks so much for watching this episode. Make sure to tune in next week for part two of Electrical. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and comment below what type of system you might use in your van build. Hope you have a wonderful week. We'll see you on the next one. Okay, you ready? Are we gonna be on, on camera? You ready for the video? Q2? Q2?